Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now before we join spellbinding SAA artist Sharon Hurst for today's Art by Exercise, I want to show you a few more simple techniques to help bring your paintings to life. Let's take a look how to add a bit of wave and a bit of reflection and that nice kind of sea that washes in at the side of the beach, seascapes. I think most people enjoy painting the seascape. I love doing them. And I'm quite lucky that I get to do painting holidays and travel around to places like Norfolk and Northumberland and see these places in person. And over the years, I've picked up simple ways of actually creating the water washing in on the beach. I've prepared this basic background, just a bit of natural blue for the actual sea and a bit of natural yellow for the sand with a bit of a white gap in the middle as I've brushed it across. And I've painted in this basic breaker. What I'd like to do is show you how to get the three-dimensional wave effect using a size six brush and just using some natural grey mixed with a little bit of natural blue. And that's a great colour for getting the drop of the water. And what we do very simply, something to practice this. You might want to sketch these in first, but you're basically going to go in and you're going to wiggle. You've got to practice the wiggle, OK? put the point of the brush on and just basically come down and wiggle it like this and then we'll drop another one just below think in perspective making the width wider as it drops further down clean your brush just wipe it over tissue and then what we'll do is we'll drag those lines away off to the right hand side towards the beach so we're just going to give it a bit of a bit of a soften scrubbing away until it looks as though it's blending. And as soon as it does blend away, that's when you start to see how the actual water is lapping. Without the blend, it doesn't work. So you need to make it look as though it's really softening out there. So it's well worth putting your time into that. There we go. Now if I use a slightly darker colour from Natural Grey, with a little bit of burnt sienna. That'll give us a sandy sort of brownie colour, which is great for that point where the water washes in and then it goes back again, leaving the wet sand, basically. And to get this effect, we could do this near the break, but do a similar kind of idea, wiggle it like that, clean your brush, dab it on tissue, and then do the same thing, pull this away, blend it out, keep scrubbing, Keep going in to make it blend. And then just put one or two little flicks going horizontal. The brush is almost dry at this point. That helps to actually bed it down onto the surface of the sand. There we go. I'm just going to use some natural yellow as it, as it stands by itself. I'm just going to put some little bits of a um, bit of a glaze, which is a transparent watercolour wash. I'm just going to work over the top of those blended areas and put a little bit over there as well. You can probably barely see this. The colour is 90% water, but it's enough just to bed things down. Using the same dark colour with a bit of a dry brush. Where the breaker is, I'm going to put some little flakes down from those points because what that will do is that will help to give reflection which always makes a difference. And we could also do some of this just from the edge of the water. And those flicks give that nice impression of reflection in water. So just for a finishing touch, just dampen your brush and pick up some opaque white or some gouache. Don't put too much water because you lose the opacity of the colour. I'm just going to work on the opposite edge with the white, quite thick. Don't be afraid to use it strong. And if we go right along the shadowy edge, both of those two there, and again, make sure it's very thick, especially at the bottom area. And also, we could drop a little tiny bit as well, just on the edge of the damp sand. Clean your brush, blend it away. So that's wipe it on tissue a little bit. And then just basically flick it off to the left side this time. So it's the opposite to what we did before. And hopefully you can see how it's created the little 
gentle washing in effect of the waves and you could even go very thick and put a couple of little sort of white horses and things just down there. But that's it folks, a very simple and effective way of creating that beach water meeting beach effect. Have a go yourself and remember the most important thing is to have fun and enjoy yourself. Right, it's time to welcome a very enchanting special guest. Let's join spellbinding SAA artist Sharon Hurst as she demonstrates how easy it is to tidy up the edges of your watercolour painting in today's Art Bite exercise. Hello, today I'm going to quickly show you how to tidy up the edges of a painting. And I'm not talking about your gardening. This has got to be really smart. A lot of people don't like to use masking fluid because they find that it leaves a, a, a frayed edge. I don't know how else to describe it. But you can deal with that and you can tidy it up. So have the colour of your background, that's your starting point, and two brushes and simply, simply offer the colour up to the edges here on her neck. If I tighten that edge of her neck up, I use darker paint. Down here, come down the edge, smarten it up, and with your second brush, water, and just blend. Just blend. We can make that darker. We can go into a darker colour paint, same mix, thicker, just thicker. And for instance, let's come down here to her shoulder. Put your pot brush down, bring it down and round, Tighten that edge right up. Nice, smooth, sharp edge. And then with the second brush and just damp, come in and smooth it. Rinse it, get rid of the pigment, come back and you can take it out. Just keep on coming out until the line vanishes. Over this side on the shoulder again, we're a little bit scruffy round here. So if I come in with my darker paint and I just edge it like so, it tightens it up, it sharpens it up, it smartens it up. And there you find that when you've done this all around our figure and around the edges of the moon, you've got a halo almost around your figure. It's a good effect. I like it very much and I use it on all of my paintings. Give it a try and see what you think. It's easy. Always a pleasure to watch Sharon's enthusiastic and engaging style. And a great tip for creating nice, smooth, sharp edges. Thanks for that, Sharon. Well, folks, time for a little break now, but join us in part three when popular SAA oil artist Mike Skidmore returns to put the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand That project. We'll see you right after the break. <laughs> 